إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam One of the most powerful passages in the Quran is a selection of verses of Surah Az-Zumur One of the tabi'oon Al-Hasan Al-Basri said These series of verses are the most optimistic verses in the entire Quran they're the most hopeful verses in the entire Qur'an. That no matter who turns to them, no matter how great the sinner is, when he reads these verses, he must feel optimistic and he must feel a sense of possibility that insha'Allah ta'ala, Allah will forgive me. And these series of verses go as follows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, announce, O oh my servants who have wronged themselves, يَا عِبَادِي الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ O oh my servants who have committed israf against themselves, لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Do not despair about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't give up hope of Allah's rahmah. Why? Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah will forgive every sin. Innahu huwa al-ghafoorur rahim. Verily Allah is ghafoor and Allah is rahim. And the verses go on. And so in today's short khutbah, I wanted to shed some light on these beautiful verses in Surah Az-Zumur. Firstly, why were these verses revealed? Scholars say a number of things happened at the same time, and the verse catered to all of these scenarios. And this is of the miracles and beauties of the Qur'an, that of course every verse is related to many incidents and many things in the seerah. One incident is that a group of mushrikun came to the Prophet ﷺ, and they said, O Messenger of Allah, your message sounds very good, but we have a problem. This person committed murders when he was in his young days. This man committed a lot of zina and a lot of fornication. This man is a highway robber. So why should we join your faith if there's no way to get all of these sins forgiven? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse. That say and respond back to them, Qul, Ya ibadi alladina asrafu ala anfusihim. O oh, you who have wronged yourselves, la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Don't despair of Allah's mercy. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah will forgive everything. This is one story that's narrated that happened at the time. Another incident. So this is about non Muslims. Another story is about Muslims, and therefore the verse applies to both. The story about Muslims goes as follows. Umar ibn al-Khattab narrates and he says, when we emigrated from Mecca to Medina, some Muslims, they tried to emigrate, but they were caught. And the pagans tortured them, and so they decided to remain in Mecca. So we began to say amongst ourselves, how will Allah ever forgive them? Just because of a little torture, khalas, they went back to Mecca. They didn't come to us. Just because of a few beats and lashes, they decided they didn't become kafir, but they stayed in Mecca. And it was obligatory for the Muslims to migrate to Medina. It was wajib, it was obligatory for those Muslims to migrate to the Prophet ﷺ. So they, because of some of them were threatened with loss of money, others were physically hit, others things happened, so they decided we'll remain in Mecca. And they remained Muslim, but they didn't go to Medina. 
So Umar said, we started talking amongst ourselves. How will Allah ever forgive them? Allah is never going to forgive these people. Just because of some torture, some money loss, they decided to stay in Mecca. Allah is never going to forgive them. So Allah came down with this verse, and yani Jibreel came down with this verse, criticizing what we had said about our fellow Muslims. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Oh, you have wronged yourselves. Don't give up hope of Allah's mercy. Allah can forgive all sins. So Umar said, as soon as this verse came down, كَتَبْتُهَا بِيَدِي I wrote it with my own hands. And I sent it to my friend, Hisham ibn Amr in Mecca. I sent it to my friend. So that he gets the point. And Hisham says, when I got the verse, it didn't click in me what the verse was about. Why is he sending me this verse? And I kept on reading and reading the whole passage that we're going to talk about in this khutbah until finally I prayed to Allah, Oh Allah, give me understanding. What is the relevance of this verse to what I have done, to me? And so he said immediately it clicked that Allah is telling me that He will forgive my sin if I obey these verses. So this story, and we're going to go on, what is the verse telling uh, them to do? This story therefore suggests that the verse applies to, non, to Muslims. Which is it? Muslims or non-Muslims? The response is both. The verse applies to both as long as they meet the conditions of the ayah. Notice Allah says qul, which means to the Prophet ﷺ, anytime there is a qul in the whole Quran, anytime there is a qul, the reference here is to the Prophet ﷺ to say it, to emphasize. In fact, the whole message must be said by the Prophet ﷺ. But when it is preceded by a qul, the point is for us to emphasize what is being said. There's special status given. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ There's a proclamation, there's an announcement that's more important that we need to pay attention to. So whenever any verse has a قُلْ, we need to pay extra attention to it. Allah is saying, pay attention! Our Prophet is being told to announce. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا O my servants who have wronged themselves. Notice. That the verse begins talking to the Prophet ﷺ. Then Allah began speaking directly to us, cutting out the Prophet ﷺ. Ya ibadi, O oh my servants! And this shows us that in this address, our Lord wanted to speak to me and you directly. He didn't go through and He said, Ya Rasulullah, you tell the Muslims. No. He said, Ya ibadi, my servants. He's speaking to us directly. It's a direct khitab, mubashir, it's a direct address to me and you. That all oh my servants, and Allah ascribes us to Himself. In order to give us an honor, in order to give us a sense of hope, you are my servants, you are my ibad, you are nobody else's. And this verse also applies to non-Muslims as well, because there's two meanings of ibad. One meaning of ibad is slave. And in this meaning, Muslim and non-Muslim were all slaves of Allah. The other meaning of ibad is worshipper. And in this meaning, only the Muslim is the worshipper of Allah. So when Allah says, Ya ibadi, it could mean even kafir. Because even the kafir is Allah's slave. Right? And when Allah says, Ya ibadi, he could mean Muslim. Because in this sense, ibad is my worshipper. So both meanings are there in the verse. Ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim. O oh my servants who have Asrafu, the meaning of Israf is interesting. Because generally speaking, Israf means to spend extravagantly. To spend beyond the means. This is what Israf means. To go beyond the bounds. Allah calls our sins Israf. Because we have gone beyond the bounds of what we should have. Just like spending too much money is called Israf. And Allah says in the Quran, don't spend too much money, don't be extravagant, because in Allah la yuhibbul musrifin. The meaning of israf there means you're spending above your means. You, you spend, suppose you, you're a middle income person, and you purchase the most expensive sports car to show off to the people. You purchase a $20,000 watch to show off to the people. This is israf, you're living above your means. Allah says, wala tusrifu. Yet here, the word israf is being used for sins. Why? Because any person who commits a sin has gone beyond what he's required to do. Every sin is an israf, not with your money, with your body. You're spending your health, you're spending your energy, you're spending what commodity Allah has given you, 
and you're using it in an incorrect way. Just like when you have money and you spend above your means, this is israf. Now when you sin, you spend your time, you spend your health, you spend your faculties, your ears, your eyes, your, your, your hands, whatever Allah has blessed you with, but you do it in something above the means. So Allah says, asrafu. And then He says, ala anfusihim. To emphasize that your sins, my sins, they only harm me and you. You did israf against yourself. You didn't harm anybody else. You didn't harm Allah. Nobody lost except for you. So Allah Azza wa Jalla subtly points out, why are you committing sins when you're only harming yourself? Ya ibadi alladina asrafu ala anfusihim, la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Never give up hope. Al-qunut means to despair. To have no hope at all. And Allah says, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Never give up hope of rahmah of Allah. And the Prophet Ibrahim said that لا ييأس من روح الله No one can give up hope of Allah's mercy إلا القوم الكافرون Except for the people who don't believe in Allah. And the Prophet said that if the kafir really knew how much mercy Allah had, even he would be optimistic of receiving it. And our Prophet ﷺ said that the biggest of all sins is to worship someone besides Allah and to give up hope of the mercy of Allah. SubhanAllah, he equated it with shirk. The worst of all sins is a shirku billahi azza wa jal. وَالْقُنُوطُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ This he equated it with shirk. Somebody will say, how is this shirk? I understand the worst sin is worshipping an idol. But why could our Prophet ﷺ add on to that and say, and along with this in the same category, he added it with a wow and giving up hope of Allah's mercy. How could this be? Because the one who gives up hope of Allah's mercy, Astaghfirullah, a'udhu billah, he is having a very cheap impression of Allah, a very stingy, a very miserly impression of Allah. He is thinking of Allah as being someone who cannot forgive his sins. And this is thinking of Allah in a very negative manner. If we truly knew who is Allah and how much His mercy is, we would never give up hope of Allah's mercy. And that's what Ibrahim said. No one can give up hope of Allah's mercy illa al kafirun, except for those who don't believe in Allah. If we know who is Allah and who is Ar-Rahman and who is Ar-Rahim, if we know who is Allah and how much is His mercy, our Prophet ﷺ said that when Allah created the creation, He divided up His mercy into 100 parts. And one part He sent down to this world. And because of it, creation shows mercy to one another. So much so that a, uh, a female horse will be kind to its fowl, to its, its children. In other words, the mercy of the entire creation from the time Allah created Adam until the day of judgment. Even between two creatures, even between two insects, all of this put together is but one. And what did our Prophet say? And the rest Allah has kept for Himself to use on the day of judgment for His creation. All of this rahmah Allah Azza wa will use it for us. So then Allah says, Ya ibadi, O my servants, how can you give up hope of Allah's rahmah? Allah will forgive all sins. And notice here, there is no condition. Somebody can say, but I thought Allah does not forgive kufr and shirk. Allah does not forgive associating partners with Him. The response, Allah does forgive shirk if a person accepts Islam. Allah does forgive kufr if a person accepts Islam. So even the sins of shirk and kufr can be forgiven. And that's what the next ayah says, right? That's what the next ayah says. As long as you accept Islam, every sin can be forgiven. Therefore, it is true to say that Allah Azza wa Jal can forgive every sin unconditionally. It is true. And it is also true to say that Allah does not forgive the sin of shirk for the one who does not repent. If you don't repent and you worship other than Allah, Allah is not going to forgive you. So Allah is saying that Allah in Allah yaghfiru dhunub jami'a. And by the way, dhunub, we all know dhunub means sins. Do you know where this comes from? So that we understand what is a sin. Dhunub comes from dhanab. 
And the Arabs know what Dhanab means. Dhanab means the tail. Dhanab means the tail of a sheep or a goat. And Allah Azza wa Jal calls sins a tail because when the animal is going to be taken to the slaughter, typically the Arabs would hold it by the tail and just drag it. And then they would go and slaughter it. So the dhanab is basically that which is embarrassing. Firstly, it's your tail, it's your behind. Right? Secondly, it's gonna, you cannot protect against somebody pulling the animal from the tail. It can do nothing. The horn is in the front, it's going to attack from the front. You pull from the back, it will cause your destruction. And so themb comes from thenab because themb will cause your destruction. Themb is something to be embarrassed about, like the tail, like the behind. Literally, this is what them means. And this is where the term sin comes from in the Arabic language. Because again, the Arabic language is the most beautiful language. It's the language of Allah and His Messenger. It is the language of the Quran. And so there's profound meanings. Therefore, sin comes from that which is embarrassing, the behind. And it comes from that which is dragged to your death. When the animal is dragged, this is where the word them comes from. So Allah is saying, Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah will forgive all sins. Inna huwa al ghafur al rahim. Allah is al ghafur and Ar-Rahim and these two names of Allah are amongst the most common names in the entire Quran amongst the most common names in the entire Quran and they have been paired together at least 70 times Ghafur Ar-Rahim and the meaning of Ghafur is the one who covers up the sin so that it doesn't harm you the meaning of Ghafur is to cover up the sin so that it does not harm you and from the same root the Arabs call the helmet the Mirfar. The Mirfar is the helmet because the helmet protects you from the enemy's blows. So Al Ghafur protects you from your own sin. It's there. You haven't you have earned it. It's existent. But Allah comes and Allah protects you from the consequences of your own sins. Because there's nobody else attacking you other than me and you. We're attacking ourselves. So Al Ghafur protects us from harming ourselves. This is what Al-Ghafur means. And Al-Rahim is of course the one who is showing mercy. Because if Allah didn't show us mercy, we wouldn't deserve anything that we have. If Allah dealt with us the way that we deserve, Allah says in the Quran, If Allah treated people as they deserve, if Allah were to give you what you earn and deserve through our meager ibadat, whatever we do, and taking into account our sins, Allah says, there would not be a single creature left on this whole world. We can only exist with the rahmah of Allah and the, and the mercy of Allah. Without that, we will not exist. So Allah is ghafoor rahim and Allah is pointing out that all of the sins you have committed, you're still alive, you're still being fed by Allah, you're still being taken care of. Why don't you be optimistic and turn to Allah and realize the rest of your sins will also be forgiven. Inna Allahu, inna huwa al rahim How then do we get maghfirah? Allah tells us two ayat. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ So if you want to be forgiven, what needs to be done? أَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ Anaba means to turn back to. Anaba means to return where you came from. So it is as if the sinner has turned his back and walked away from Allah. So Allah is calling him back, come back to me. Wa'anibu, come back to me. The sinner has abandoned and neglected Allah. The sinner has turned his back away from Allah and Allah is calling him back, come back to me, وَأَنِيبُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ I am your Rabb, I will take care of you. The meaning of Rabb is the one who takes care of, the one who nourishes, the one who sustains. This is what Rabb means from Tarbiya, to, to take care of. وَأَنِيبُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ And submit yourself to him. Because the one who is sinning has turned his back away from Allah and is acting arrogant. So Allah is saying, turn back to me and humble yourself. وَأَنِيبُوا وَأَسْلِمُوا Turn back to me and humble yourself. And of course, أَسْلِمُوا also means accept Islam if you're not a Muslim. And if you are a Muslim, أَسْلِمُوا means submit even more. It applies again to both. The ayah applies to both Muslim and non-Muslim. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ Turn back to Allah and humble yourself in front of Him. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابِ Before the punishment comes to you. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ And no one will be able to help you against that punishment. So here Allah 
hints at a threat, but he doesn't ascribe the threat to himself, even though it is coming from Allah, Allah, it is from Allah, but he doesn't ascribe it to himself, whereas he ascribes the mercy to himself. And this is of the perfection of the Quran. Rahmatillah, he says, but adab, he doesn't say adabullah in this verse. There's a time and a place for that, but in this verse, he lets it be. Because now is the verse or the maqam of calling his servants back. So Allah is saying there will come a punishment. There's only one protection from the punishment of Allah and that is the mercy of Allah. There's only one protection from Allah and that is with Allah. لا ملجا ولا منجا منك إلا إليك. There is no being who can protect you against Allah other than Allah. So Allah is saying before the punishment comes and no one will be able to help you because there is no helping against Allah. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِيمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ يَأْتُكُمْ عَذَابُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ And then Allah Azza wa Jal gives us three excuses. Three common excuses that people disobey Allah or people reject Allah Azza wa Jal, both Muslim, so are sinning and kafirs. There are three excuses. Number one, أَن تَقُولَ نَفْسٌ يَا حَسْرَةَ عَلَى مَا فَرَّطُ فِي جَنْبِ اللَّهِ وَإِن كُنْتُ لَمِنَ السَّاخِرِينَ Allah is saying, turn back to me and repent before one of these three excuses will be said. And Ibn Abbas points out, Allah quoted the three most common excuses that people will say on the Day of Judgment. The three most common excuses. Number one, أَن تَقُولَ نَفْسٌ يَا حَسْرَةَ عَلَى مَا فَرَّطُ فِي جَنْبِ اللَّهِ Before a person will say, يَا حَسْرَةَ means, uh, it's an Arabic word that means, woe to me. Why did I do this? Why didn't I do anything else? It's a reproachment, self-incrimination. Why would I do that? That's what it means. Ya hasrata, ala ma farratu fi jambillah. I wasted and I neglected the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa in kuntu lamina sakhirin. And I would make fun of those who were religious. This is the first excuse. Why did I do that? What did I waste my whole life doing nothing? فَرَّطُّ فِي جَنْبِ اللَّهِ means I had plenty of opportunities, but I didn't take them. I had plenty of times, plenty of things to do, but I didn't do them. فَرَّطُّ means I wasted, dilly-dallied, went it on, not paying attention to what is more important. فِي جَنْبِ اللَّهِ يَعْنِ فِي حُقُقِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ In terms of what are the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَإِن كُنْتُ لَمِنَ السَّاخِرِينَ And instead, I would be making fun. Making fun of who? Of the religious people. Ah, look at those fanatics. Look at those people praying or whatnot. This is a life to enjoy. This is making fun. And on the Day of Judgment, Allah tells us, those who made fun will be made fun of. Those who made fun of the righteous, they will be made fun of. So here and now he is regretting, why did I waste my time making fun of the people? أَوْ تَقُولَ لَوْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ هَدَانِي لَكُنْتُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ The second excuse. This is arrogance. At least the first person, he blames himself. More arrogant than this, this is Iblis basically. He blames Allah. أَوْ تَقُولَ لَوْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ هَدَانِي Why didn't Allah guide me? And we hear this by the way. A Muslim is not praying, Oh, when Allah wills, I'm going to pray. A Muslim is drinking, When Allah wills, I'm going to give up drinking. لَا حَوْلَ لَا قُتِلَ You're blaming Allah for your own sins? You're blaming Allah for your own sins? And this is what Allah is saying. أَوْ تَقُولَ لَوْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ هَدَانِي لَكُنْتُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Why didn't Allah guide me? Allah should have guided me, I would have been from the muttaqeen. And then the third, أَوْ تَقُولَ حِينَ تَرَ الْعَذَابَ لَوْ أَنَّ لِي كَرَّةً فَأَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Or he will say when he sees the punishment coming to him, give me one more chance. One more. لَوْ أَنَّ لِي كَرَّةً Allow me one more opportunity. Then you will see, لَأَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ I'm going to be the best of the best. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates all of these excuses. Bala. And bala means no. Harfu idrab, you're, you're, you're eliminating all of these excuses. Qad ja'atka ayati. My message came to you, my verses came to you. And this is a refutation of the one who says, Why didn't Allah guide me? Allah says, No, I gave you the message. Don't blame me. Qad ja'atka ayati. فَكَذَّبْتَ بِهَا You rejected and neglected. And this is a refutation for the one who says, Why didn't I do any more? Allah is telling him, You didn't do it. فَرَّطُّ فِي جَنْبِ اللَّهِ Why was I wasting my time? Allah says, You كَذَّبْتَ You didn't act upon it. كَذَّبَ means to turn your back, to reject, to not act upon. Allah is saying, This is your fault. And وَكُنْتَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ You are of those who 
Uh, of course, kafir primarily means rejecting of Islam, but there is a secondary meaning of kafir, and that is the opposite of shakir, right? Kufr actually has two meanings. Kufr can be the opposite of iman, iman and kafir, mu'min and kafir. Kufr can also be the opposite of shukr. La'in tashkuru yardaw lagu in takfuru. Shukr and kufr are also opposites. So once again, the verse applies to both Muslim and non Muslim. The sinner, he is also a type of kufr, meaning uh, uh, not grateful. And of course, the kafir who has rejected Islam, he is of course the kafir. So Allah is saying that you're telling me, lakuntu min al muttaqeen. I am telling you, you weren't of the muttaqeen, lakunta min al kafirin. You were of the kafirin. All of these three excuses, there is, by the way, one excuse Allah did not respond to here, and that is, give me one more chance. That Allah did not respond to over here. But He responds in other verses in the Quran. And He says, لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ minni. I have already said this. Done decree. This is my statement from the very beginning. That every soul shall taste death but once. And everyone will get one chance. And no one will be given another chance. This is the decree of Allah. You can beg as much as you want, but there will only be one opportunity in this world. So in this series of verses, which as we said, one of the scholars of the past said, the most optimistic verse in the whole Qur'an, that no matter what is the sin, no matter what is the lifestyle that we have lived, if we follow this verse, and what is that verse? Two things need to be done. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ Right? وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ That turn to your Lord and submit to Him. If we do this, and we follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah has clearly said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Each and every sin that we have done, Allah has guaranteed. إِنَّ اللَّهَ means Allah has already. And this is a guarantee. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ Allah will forgive all sins. And this is a promise. But the promise is conditional. If we meet the conditions, we can get the promise. Insha'Allah ta'ala, these verses will be read by each and every one of us. Let us go back to Surah Al-Zumur. It is around 40 to 50 uh, of the Surah Al-Zumur. Read these verses, understand them, implement them. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to be of those whose sins are forgiven and whose ranks are elevated in this world and the next. Barakallahu wa rakum fuqa'an al-azim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa dhikr al-hakim aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum wa li sa'il muslimin min kulli dhanbin fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. We can move up, inshallah, there's brothers outside. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, al wahid al ahad. Al fard al samad. Al ladi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu kufwan ahad. Wa ba'du. In these series of verses, there are two emotional concepts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references indirectly. The first of them, to hope for Allah's mercy. To not despair of Allah's mercy, which, which means to hope for Allah's mercy. And the second is to be scared of Allah's punishment. Because Allah mentions His adab. And these two emotions must coexist in the heart of the believer, together, hand in hand. Wanting Allah's mercy and hoping for Allah's mercy, i.e. being optimistic. This is a sign of iman. The Muslim, the mu'min should feel, yes, Allah will forgive me. There should be that attitude. Inshallah, Allah will forgive me. I'm hopeful. But along with that hope, there should coexist another emotion as well. What if Allah doesn't? What if Allah punishes me? There should also be a dread or a fear. And both of those emotions must be together simultaneously in the heart. يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying they're calling upon their Lord in hope and in fear. They want some good, but they're scared of the opposite and the bad. And these two emotions, our Prophet said, they are the sign of Iman in Allah Azza wa Jal. Because if only one of these emotions exists, this will lead to misguidance. The one who is optimistic of Allah's mercy and he has no fear, what happens with him? 
He opens up his door for all sins. Ah, oh, Allah is ghafoor, Allah is rahim. I'm not worried, Allah is, forgives everything. See this, in one hadith the Prophet called this a foolish attitude. This is not iman, this is a foolish attitude. That, وَتَمَنَّ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْأَمَانِي The Prophet said, he does everything in the book, but he's, every haram in the book, but he still hopes Allah is going to forgive him. He says, this is a foolish person. The other extreme, which is to feel that Allah is never going to forgive me, to dread. This leads to extremism. It leads to intolerance and narrow-mindedness. It leads to zealousness and bigotry. These two extremes, if they exist by themselves, will destroy the Muslim. The one extreme, because he's going to become lax about sins. Allah is ghafoor, Allah is rahim. The other extreme, he's going to become fanatical about the religion. Allah is never going to forgive, I need to do this, I need to do that. Everything becomes haram. He becomes a person who uh, becomes an ultra fanatic or a zealous or a, uh, 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 a fanatical person. And we have groups like this till to this day. From the time of the Sahaba, the Khawarij up until our times. They're only worried about fear and punishment and, and adab of Jahannam. Whereas Islam is not just about adab, it's also about mercy. So the heart of the mu'min has both of these emotions. And that is wanting Allah's Mercy, optimistic for Allah's mercy. Which means, as our Prophet ﷺ said, that you have husn al billah. You think the best thoughts of Allah. Every one of us should be optimistic. Allah will forgive. Inshallah, Allah will forgive. But along with that optimism, there must be as well, in the same heart, at the same time. But what if he doesn't? What if I don't deserve that? And if you have both of these together, we get the balanced life. And this also reminds us, brothers and sisters, that no matter what sins we have done, we shouldn't feel confident in our tawbah or our good, nor should those sins cause us to despair. Once again, the two extremes. No matter what position of iman we're in, whether we're the highest of the high or the lowest of the low, both of these emotions still must exist. The sinner must also hope Allah will forgive me. But he must have along with that a fear of his sins. And the most righteous person on earth will also hope Allah will reward me for my good. But he must also fear, what if Allah forgive, does not forgive me for my sins? And when we have these two attitudes together, then this will bring about a moderation. And our scholars say that these two emotions, and of course in Arabic they're called Al-Khawfu wa raja fearing Allah and hoping in Allah. Al-Khawfu wa raja fearing in Allah and hoping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mentions these two, by the way, together in many verses in the Qur'an. Uh, of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Those whom you call about besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَتَهُ وَيَخَافُونَ عَذَابَ He puts the two of them together. Allah is saying, those beings whom you worship, like Jesus Christ, like the angels, the reality is they themselves يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَتَهُ وَيَخَافُونَ عَذَابَ Notice, they want Allah's mercy and they're scared of His punishment and anger. Mercy and anger, they go hand in hand. Wanting mercy and being scared of anger, they go hand in hand. And this is how Allah Azza wa describes the believers in the entire Qur'an. And these selections of Surah Al-Zumur as well, they, they illustrate this point. That the sinner should not despair because of his sins. He should always hope the best, but he should still fear his sins. And the righteous person as well should not become arrogant and confident because of his good. He should always fear for the sins. And as long as, brothers and sisters, as long as... We check our hearts and these two emotions are both present, then Alhamdulillah we thank Allah Azza wa Jal. No matter what sin we have done, and this is not a license to commit sins, this is the reality. No matter what sin we have done, and this is one of the tabi'un said this, that as long as a person feels regret when he thinks of his sins, and he feels happiness when he thinks of the good deeds that he has done, as long as these two emotions are checked in his heart, Insha'Allah, he is upon good. He didn't say he's the highest, he's upon good. As long as you have, you know what we call it in English, it's called a conscience. If we have a conscience in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, right? If we genuinely feel the evil that we've done, and we are humbled and proud at the little good that Allah has allowed us to do. As long as we have this, one of the Sahaba, one of the Tabi'un said this, one of the Tabi'un, he said this, that as long as when you think of your good, you feel happy. And when you think of your evil, you feel sad. 
Insha'Allah there is khair, there is good in you. And this ayah or these ayat of Surah Al-Zumur also combine these two emotions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who have perfected khawf and raja, those who have the best thoughts of Allah and are also scared of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu. Allahumma la ta'dana fi hadhan yawmi dhamban illa ghafarta, wa la hamman illa farrajta, wa la daynan illa qadayta, wa la maridan illa shafayta, wa la asiran illa yassarta. Allahumma gfir lana wa لإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بالسوء فأشغله بنفسه واجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه ثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتأيد القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة